press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Dear children, welcome back to the session. In today's session, we will be discussing the other pathway of control and coordination that is the chemical means of information transformation or the endocrine system. Endocrine system is the term which we generally use with respect to animals and human beings. The chemical means of information transformation or the hormonal means of information transformation is what we generally use with respect to plants. Also the term can be used with respect to animals and human beings as well. So we will be discussing about this means, the chemical means of information transformation in case of plants and later on we will shift on to the endocrine system in human beings. So before we could understand these hormones and the types of hormones in plants and how they control and coordinate the system, in general we will understand the significance of the system. This is in general, that is, uh, it can be related to plants as well as animals and human beings. We will understand what this is, we will uh, get the information about this. In general, we will understand what this system is and later in particular, we will discuss the topic. So, the chemical means of information transformation. Before this, it's better if we could recall the limitations of nervous system. In the last session, we understood the limitations of nervous system. The very first limitation is, it cannot potentially reach every cell of the body. It can only reach those cells that are connected by the nervous system. The second most important limitation is, it cannot continually, persistently generate and transmit signals. So it requires some time to reset itself. So these are the two limitations we came across with respect to the nervous system in human beings or animals. So here is another system. Let's understand what this is. Understand or imagine there is a one particular type of cell, the stimulated cells. This is a one set of cell. There is stimulated cell. Imagine these are the stimulated cells. Stimulated cells are cells which receive stimulus which receive stimulus. So these type 1 cells, okay? Let's consider these to be type 1 cells. These are the stimulated cells. On stimulation, on receiving stimulation, what happens is these release chemical compounds. Imagine there is one type of cell. These are the stimulated cells and they release chemicals, chemical compounds called hormones. And these hormones or these chemical uh, substances which these uh, cells, particular or specialized cells release, these diffuse around, diffuse around the original cell, diffuses all around. It diffuses over a, over a certain range. And imagine there is another type of cell, type 2 cells. And these cells have got some special molecules on their surfaces, some special proteins or some special uh, molecules on their surfaces. Imagine there is some special arrangement or special molecules on their surfaces. And these can detect the information, these chemicals. These can detect the information sent by or the chemicals, the hormones released by these particular type of cells, these specialized cells. They are capable of sensing, recognizing, receiving the information sent by type 1 cells with the help of the special arrangement, the special molecules on their surfaces. What happens is they are capable of recognizing the information. Some information has been transmitted in the form of chemicals by particular type of cells. So this information has been recognized received, recognized with the help of some special uh, molecules or proteins present on their surfaces. They, they not only re uh, receive or recognize the information, but they are also capable of transmitting this information over a wide range. So they are capable of recognizing the information that is sent by type 1 cells. These are the specialized cells or these are the stimulated cells upon stimulation. What they do is they release certain chemical substances. These chemical substances are referred to as hormones. They release these chemical substances 
and the chemical substances released by these stimulated cells diffuse all around the original cells and there is another type of cell with the help of certain special molecules on the surfaces they are capable of detecting recognizing the information sent in the form of chemicals some information has been sent by these cells in the form of chemicals in the form of hormones so these chemicals are sensed or recognized by another type of cells they don't they not only recognize but they also transmit this information over a wide range they transmit this information further and imagine the target organ is somewhere here part 3 or third type of cells is it a target cells or the target organs target organs are the one where the activity is to be seen where the response is to be seen it diffuses until here and the response is shown here is the activity the actual activity or the actual response is shown in this case in, that is the type 3 type of cells type 3 cells or the target organs show activity show responses clear so i'll read it out once if stimulated cells so instead of sending nerve impulses through the nervous system the nerve impulses travel only along the cells that are connected by nervous system instead of that if there is another mechanism in plants as well as animals and human beings if there is imagine if there is another type of system in plants and human beings animals as well wherein the stimulated cells upon receiving stimulation they release chemical compound chemical compounds these chemical compounds are referred to as the hormones if they release these chemical compounds and this would diffuse all around the original cell this would diffuse all around the original cell and it is being transmitted it is being diffused in a sense it is being transmitted it is being moving further and there is another type of cells here another type of cells or the target cells that are capable of recognizing this information with the help of special molecules on their surfaces type 2 cells can be target cells also or intermediate cells also we can consider them to be the target cells also so target cells are the one target organs are the one wherein the activity is to be seen the response is to be seen there the activity is to be seen so special molecules on their surfaces they don't even they not only recognize but they also transmit the information if such system is possible what happens is the advantage is over a wide range it's possible the spread of information is possible over a wide range over a wide range activity can be seen not only a particular organ not only a particular organ system but many organ systems many organs many parts of the uh, many other parts of the body many many cells can receive information they can transmit and particular activity is to be shown it reaches the target cells or the target organs so these are the one that are referred to as stimulated cells and there is another type of cell referred to as the target cells are the target organs it reaches the target organs and in the target organs the activity is seen ultimately so this is the system we are speaking about this is a system which takes place in plants animals and human beings as well so this is a chemical means of transformation this is this seems to be very slow this won't happen all of a sudden this won't happen within a fraction of a second it takes some time although it is slow it is persistent in nature it is persistent and continually this signals can be sent the chemical signals the chemical information the hormones can be persistently continuously sent as long as it is needed it can be sent so this is the advantage of the chemical means of information transformation it is slow the one thing is it is slow it is not as fast as nerve impulses it is relatively slower but the important thing is the important advantage is it is continuous and persistent steady in nature steadily the information is sent persistently it is sent and over a wide range or oh, it it can be seen the effect can be seen over a wide range and wide range of cells receive information irrespective of uh, nerve cells irrespective of ner nervous system many cells can receive information so these are the advantages let me write down the advantages of chemical means of information transformation and we'll switch on to uh, this chemical means uh, of information transformation in case of plants hope this is clear to you it's very simple and very interesting specialized cells that are stimulated cells they generate uh, chemicals 
and chemicals diffuse over a wide range and ultimately uh, effect is seen in target organs is this clear to you so let me write down the advantages of this chemical means of information transformation The chemical or hormonal means of information transformation or information transmission Let me write down few points related to this. The first is, it is relatively slow. When compared to the nervous system or nerve impulses, they are relatively slower. But the advantages are, the information that is the chemical information reaches the information potentially reach potentially reach all the cells all the cells of the body regardless of nervous connections regardless of nervous connections they don't differentiate so it reaches every cell or all the cells regardless of nervous connection the next important point is It is steady and persistent. Can be done steadily and persistently. Steadily and persistently. Fourth important point is it provides the system the chemical means of information transformation transmission provides wide range of it provides a wide range of wide ranging changes needed So I have told you why, what this wide ranging changes are. Imagine a situation where a, a tiger is chasing you. Not only your legs have to move, but as a whole you have to move. Your whole body has to move. Not just move, but take uh, really uh, some important decisions also. You should prepare your body in such a manner that uh, you should protect yourself from the dangerous situation. Both nervous system and the endocrine system work together in this case. So, provides wide range of changes needed. This is quite slower, but information potentially reach all the cells regardless of nervous connections. Can be done steadily and persistently. This is what is important. 
So let's understand this with respect to plants. Plant hormones or phytohormones. The chemical means of information transformation in plants. Phytohormones. Phyto refers to plant and hormones are the chemical substances. So phytohormones are the, these are the naturally occurring chemical substances. These are the naturally occurring chemical substances. Or organic substances. One important point with respect to the chemical means of information transformation is the hormones are synthesized in one particular part of the body and they travel to other part of the body. This you should keep in mind. So while we discuss this, the chemical means of information transformation, we should understand that these hormones are the special chemicals synthesized by specialized cells. So they are generated, they are synthesized in one part of the body, whether it is plant or animal or human body, it's created or generated, they are generated in one part of the body and they travel to the target organs and they are transmitted, translocated to other parts of the body. To other parts is the part where the response or the activity is to be seen. So this you should keep in mind. Even if with respect to phytohormones, phyto refers to plants and hormones. These are the plant hormones or naturally occurring chemical substances found in plants. Found in plants. So these chemical substances are synthesized in one part of the body, that is the plant body. They are synthesized. They are synthesized in one part and are translocated. Trans located or transmitted translocated to other part to other part where it is actually required to other part when required so whenever the situation arises they generate the synthesize and they translocate to other parts where actually the activity is to be seen so these phytohormones regulate the growth and development of the plants. They regulate the growth and development of the plants. And that is the reason they are also referred to as they regulate growth and development of plants. And this is the reason they are also referred to as growth regulators, hence also called growth regulators. They regulate growth, growth regulators. What are growth regulators? Phytohormones are the growth regulators. Why? Because they regulate growth and development of the plants. So these are the chemical substances found in plants, synthesized in one part of the plant and they are translocated to other part, the part where actually the action is needed. So when they are translocated, when they are generated, as and when required, whenever the situation arises, whenever the situation arises, these things happen in plants and they are also referred to as growth regulators. So growth regulators are of two types. In plants we find 
two types of growth regulators. One is plant growth promoters and the other is plant growth inhibitors. Two types of hormones or two types of growth regulators in plants. One is plant growth promoters. Promoters are the one which help in the growth of plants, which promote the growth of plants. They help in the development of plant. They help plants to grow. These are referred to as plant growth promoters. The other is plant growth inhibitors. These are the other set of hormones found in plants. The first set is plant growth promoters. The other set found in plants is plant growth inhibitors. Inhibitors are that cut down the growth, that stop the growth. So, stopping growth is also very important, right? One cannot continually keep on growing. Imagine if you keep on growing until you are old. If you are 7 feet, 8, 9, 10, how would it look? It doesn't look good, right? So, at some point of time, growth inhibition is required. Growth inhibition is necessary in plants, animals, human beings for various reasons. Plant growth promoters are necessary, but at some point of time, growth inhibitors are also very much needed. For various other reasons, for various many many other reasons, these growth inhibitors are very much necessary. So plants have got two types of this. We will understand what these are and uh, we have got certain names, certain hormones. We will learn the names of those hormones and we will understand what their functions are and where they are located in plants. So I told you this phytohormones or plant growth regulators are of two types. One is plant growth promoters and plant growth inhibitors. We find three types of hormones with respect to plant growth promoters. I hope you can write the definition for this. Plant growth promoters are the hormones that enhance or that help in the growth and development of plants. Three types of hormones are here. One is auxin, A-U-X-I-N-S, auxins. The second is gibberellin, double L-I-N-S, gibberellins. The third is Cytokinins. Cytokinins. Be careful while you write down the spelling. Auxin, A U X I N S, gibberellins, G I B B E R E L L I N S, cytokinins, C Y T O K I N I N S. So these three are plant growth promoters, whereas there are two more. Plant growth inhibitors that come under of plant growth inhibitors. Plant growth inhibitors are abscisic acid and ethylene. One is abscisic acid A B S C I S I C abscisic acid. And the other is ethylene, E T H Y L E N E. These are plant growth inhibitors. They inhibit plant growth, whereas they promote plant growth. Let's understand the role of auxin. If you can remember, in the last class, we discussed something about uh, this. Uh, what is that? Tropism phototropism and uh, while we were discussing phototropism we understood that when light sunlight used to fall from only from one side of the plant the shady part used to bend that is the it uh, it was observed that the plant the shoot of the plant bent towards the sunlight is it not this is what we have seen the shoot bending towards the plant what happened here? The root bending away from the plant, away from the root bending away from the light. So we told this is something related to phototropism, that is true. 
but there is another reason for this bend to happen. Auxins are the phytohormones that are present at the tip of the growing plants. So auxins are initially present at the tip of the growing plants. It promotes cell elongation. It promotes the cells to grow longer. What happened when these plants sense sunlight? When these plants sense sunlight, what happened is the auxins from here, they diffused towards the shady part of the plant. This is the part of the plant where there is much shady, right? So they diffused towards the shady part of the plant and helped this part of the plant to grow longer. So this part of the plant, auxin, helped this part of the plant to grow longer and that is why we can find it is bent towards. So here there is elongation, elongation of, the, of this part of the plant happened because of auxins. So auxins on uh, recognizing the sunlight on recognizing the light what happened it diffused towards the shady part of the plant and that is the reason why it appears after a few days it appears that the shoot is bent towards the sunlight so auxins are the ones that are, that are responsible for the elongation of the cells so these are the uh, this is the role of auxin and also in the last class we said something about thigmotropism and uh, we quoted the example of tendrils coiling around a support. So let's understand the role of auxin here. So the tendril. So when it comes in contact with the support, let's understand this is a support. So when it finds the support, what happens is it coils around the support. As we all know, organs are present at the tip of a growing plant. So whenever this region, whenever this region, the tip comes in contact with the support, when it recognizes the support, support is, it recognizes touch. What happens is the auxin diffuse towards the free end of the tendril. So this is the free end of the tendril, right? This is the free end and this is the one attached to the support. This is the one that has come in contact with the support. What happens? Auxin now from here diffuses towards the free end of the tendril. As it diffuses towards the free end of the tendril, the growth here is slower when compared to this. At the tip the growth is slower. What happens? They tend to coil around the support. So this is the role of auxin. It helps plants to grow. It helps plants, it helps cells to elongate. It helps in elongation or it helps cells to grow. So that is the role of auxin. Gibberellin, they also have similar role, but the gibberellin helps in growth of stem. Gibberellin help the present in stem and the help in growth of stem. Cytokinins also are responsible for the uh, growth of cell, that is they promote cell division. So cytokinins are the one, they help or they promote cell division, they help in multiplication and division of cell. And uh, as the cell divides, the plant grows further. These are the plant growth promoters. Plant growth inhibitors, inhibition is also needed. So abscisic acid is the one that is responsible for growth inhibition. It promotes wilting of leaves, wilting andre badu vudu drooping of leaves leaves droop agodike athwa wilting of leaves ige abscisic acid is uh, abscisic acid is responsible so next is ethylin ethylin is the one that causes ripening of fruits nodi on the kai kai diddu magbeku hannu agbeku tane so hannu agodike ethylin is responsible i told you plant growth inhibitors are also very much important Bari kaya gaydre, ashton dupyogak baro dilla, hannak beku, mag beku, so yelegalu, bad beku, udru beku, all these processes are very important. And that is why, like plant growth, as plant growth promoters are important, equally plant growth inhibitors are also important. So ethylene is the one that causes ripening of fruits and it also causes senescence. Senescence and deterioration or 
cell losing its capacity of uh, multiplication. Cell becoming weakened or cells becoming deteriorated. So that is the role of ethylene. We will write a table for this. Oxygen's where they are present, the location and their function, gibberellin, cytokine, I will write a table for you. You can copy down this table. Is this clear to you? Very interesting and very simple. Only thing is you should remember uh, the names with correct spellings. Remember in biology, uh, Mark's name is spelling mistakes are cut mado chances. So be aware of the spellings, write the correct spellings. Yakandre, science only one mark questions. So one one mark again, one word answers are most of the time. One word aste answer by you are one word look at another spelling mistakes are there are chances that you may lose marks. So be careful, be aware of the spellings, especially biologically. Uh, spellings kadage chanagi nivu gamna kod bhai ke rata. So let's write a table. Phytohormones or plant hormone in the first column. In the next column, we will write functions along with locations. So, location and function. Location and functions. First is auxin, A U X I N S. Where they are located? Located at shoot tip. Remember, shoot tip. Alirata, shoot tip. And function is help in cell elongation or help cells to grow longer. This is a function of auxin. The next is gibberellin. G I double B E R E double L I N S. So maybe it is located at stem because it helps in. Stem elongation promote or help growth of stem. Growth of stem. Gibberellins promote growth of stem. Next is cytokinins. C Y T O K I. N I N S cytokinins. It is evident that they are located in seeds and fruits. Seeds and fruits because they cause cell division. They promote cell division. So next we'll write the function of abscisic acid. A B S C I S I C. A B S C I S I C. Abscisic acid. Abscisic acid helps in wilting of leaves. I'll write it here. Helps in wilting, badu udu, or drooping of leaves. Wilting of leaves. 
Now next is ethylene. I'll write it here. Ethylene, it causes ripening of fruits. I think you can guess the location. Helps in ripening of fruits. Ripening of fruits and also it causes senescence. Senescence is deterioration. deterioration of fruits or cells causes senescence s e n e s c e n c e senescence is deterioration losing cells power of division and growth So these are the plant hormones and their location and their functions. But this will move further. We have got some in-text questions and we'll try to find answers for them. We'll discuss in-text questions and uh, try to find answers. The first question is what are plant hormones? Hopefully you have taken down the points and uh, depending on the marks you need to write the points. If it is asked for only one mark you need to write only one or two points. If it is a descriptive type of question uh, you need to write some four to five points and it depends. Depending on the marks you are supposed to write the answer. Uh, the description is given to you. Hopefully you have taken it down and you will write the complete answer in your notes. Okay. And while uh, attending, if, if such a question, if this question arises in exam, you need to think depending on how, for how, how much marks the question is asked, depending on that, you need to decide how much points you have got to write. Is this clear to you? So next is, how is movement of leaves of a sensitive plant different from the movement of a shoot towards light? Very simple. Movement of leaves in sensitive plant is immediate response to stimulus. So this occurs immediately in response to touch. This is independent of growth. It is not something related to growth. It is independent of growth. Touch me not plant drooping its leaves. It is independent of growth. So moment of shoot towards light. This is moment of shoot towards light is phototropism. You can also add this is positive phototropism. Moment of shoot towards sunlight is positive phototropism and this is something related to growth directional movement so this type of movement is directional and is growth dependent you will write two to three points for each of this okay moment of leaves you can make two columns and write or else you can make you can write a heading as moment of leaves like this i'll show you you can make two columns and write the answer differentiating between them or you can write a heading and under the heading you can write few points for each of these. So the second question, you can write a heading as moment of leaves <coughs> of a sensitive plant so under this heading you can quote few points like uh, it occurs that is this type of movement occurs immediately immediately in response to touch is it not it occurs immediately in response to touch and the important point is it is growth independent 
so this type of moment is it is independent of growth it is independent of growth these are the two points which you can write for this and you can write a another heading here that is what is that moment of show towards light moment of shoot two words light you can quote two to three points here what are the points you can quote first point is it occurs or is this type of mo so this is phototropism or this type of moment is it is phototropism or positive phototropism moment of shoot they have asked in particular so we can quote it is positive phototropism photo tropism and this does not occur immediately it is quite slow in nature it is directional it is directional and another important point is and growth dependent it is directional and growth dependent and also you can quote another point it does not occur immediately the response is not immediate in this case the plants respond slowly by growing in a particular direction positive phototropism it is directional and it is growth dependent these are the points you can quote let's move on to the next question give an example of a plant hormone that promotes growth so oxen they have asked give an example so oxen also promotes growth gibberellins also promote growth cytokines cause cell division so you can quote uh, anyone oxen and gibberellin could be uh, the best suited suited answer for this they have asked anyone you can write oxen and uh, you can also quote gibberellin for this how do oxen promote the growth of a tendril around a support this is already discussed if it is clear to you you will write the answer start adding the answer even i'll also write it on the board so what is the question how do auxins promote growth of a tendril around a support when a tendril comes in contact with support what happens the auxins diffuse towards the free end of it first we'll write something about auxin auxins are synthesized auxins the hormones are synthesized at the shoot tip is this point clear to you auxin is a hormone synthesized at the shoot tip and it helps it helps cells to grow longer or auxins is a plural form you can write they they help cells to grow longer so this is the extra information now comes the actual answer what happens when a tendril comes in contact with when a tendril comes in contact with the support with 
when a tendril comes in contact with support, what happens? The auxin diffuses towards the the free end of it. Less, less oxygen occurs on the side of the tendril, on the side of the tendril, on which side of the tendril? Less oxygen occurs where? On the side of the tendril that is in contact with the support, right? Less oxygen occurs at the side of the tendril. in contact with the support. In contact with the support. So what happens? The oxygen diffuses. You can quote the, uh, in the other point like, the oxygen diffuses towards the free end of it or in a single line you can write less oxygen occurs on the side of the tendril in contact with the support as compared to the as compared to the free side of the tendril as compared to the free end of the tendril Hence, auxin promotes, hence auxin promotes growth on the free end, that is the end that is not in contact with the support, the free end or the free side, it's not free end actually, it's free side. free side of the tendril and hence tendrils coil around the support. Support object. So, inhale tidini. Yavaga tendril comes in contact with the support. Yavadondo support object the Yavandu ko loathwa yadondo. Mara no deke support tagi sikto antan kondre inagata. A jaga bitto atudi bitto. A baldiye kudi bitto inagata. Ika da free endi yavadu contact le ilvo. A jaga ke oxygen la diffuse agata. So less oxygen occurs on this side of the tendril in contact with the support. Support object to take contact with the rodratra, in agata, karma oxen irata, whereas yelly jasti agata, free side, yadu contact al ilvo. Idu object and tan condre, support and tan condre, tendril, idu contact al irodratra, karma oxen barata, ili, jasti oxen barata. So, as compared to the free end of the free side of the tendril, so hence what happens? Oxen promotes growth on the free side. Ili jasti growth agata, hence. Tendril il to the aliro de inagata coils around the support object. Hope this answer is clear to you. So to the aliro do, tumba rapid agi grow ago dila, kadmerate grow to free side only. Just the growth agate. So next question is design an experiment to demonstrate hydrotropism. Hydrotropism na hege demonstrate maadbe ku anta kelta idar hai. What I'll do is I'll um, write the answer 
and I want you to draw a diagram for that. We can say uh, that hydrotropism can be seen in almost every plant wherein the roots go in search of water. But other namge can't so dilla. So we, we need to demonstrate it. Nam kanige kano hage demonstrate maadi vandu anta kelta idare. So I'll write few points. All I need is you need to write the diagram for that. For that demonstration, you need to uh, draw some diagram, represent it diagrammatically. Okay? I'll write the points. You read it. You'll definitely understand it. And uh, I want you to write diagram for the uh, experiment or the for the um, what is that? Explanation given. Okay, I'll uh, start it. Demonstration of an experiment. Experiment to demonstrate hydrotropism. Take two small beakers and uh, label them as A and B. Is this clear to you? Understand and draw diagram for this. Fill beaker A with water. Only beaker A is to be filled with water. Beaker B is not to be filled with water. Okay, beaker B is empty. Fill beaker A with water. And now you have to make some arrangement. Make a cylindrical make a cylindrical shaped roll out of filter paper from a filter paper and you need to place it as a bridge between them and you need to keep it or place it as a bridge between A and B bridge between A and B. Is this clear to you? Now you need to attach few germinating seeds. Attach few germinating seeds exactly on the middle of the filter paper exactly in the middle exactly in the middle of the filter paper bridge You should place these germinating seeds exactly on the center, middle of the filter paper bridge which you have created between A and B. So, next what you need to do is, to avoid escape of water, you need to cover the whole setup. The whole or the entire setup with a transparent plastic so why you need to do is do this is to retain moisture okay so if this is clear to you you will definitely find the conclusion for this there are two beakers A and B. This is A and this is B. So beaker A is filled with water. Now what we are going to do is a filter paper bridge between them. This is A and this is B. And in the center in the middle what we have placed is germinating seeds. Exactly in the middle of the filter paper we have placed germinating seeds. Is this clear to you? And what happens is we need to cover the entire setup with the plastic so that the water in beaker A does not escape. To prevent escape of water or to retain moisture, 
uh, we are covering the whole setup with a transparent plastic container. What happens in two to three days when the seeds start germinating, the roots tend to bend towards A. So, the roots are developed. The roots are developed. A side atra irata because it is receiving water from container A. Container B does not have water, is it not? Container B, uh, sorry, B does not contain water. Only container A has got water. Hangagi inagata. Germinating seeds sali roots tend to move or e kade develop aktir hage kansata. This is the conclusion you'll write. Okay? So the experiment is written. Uh, the procedure and everything is given to you. You need to write a beautiful diagram for this and also you need to write the conclusion for this. Is this clear to you? So let us wind up the session. Let's meet in the next class. Thank you all.